What up, Whiskey Ginger fans? Welcome back to the show. Man, we got a good one for you today. Dr. Drew is back. My man, I love this dude. He is the best, super smart. We get into the droves of history of America, as well as the uh, the dancing C word that we're not allowed to mention, that sickness that's moving around, Dr. Omakmarakran, or whatever it is. I don't even know what the new term is, um, but we had a great time. Love this dude. He the best. Also, I'm on tour. Come on, man. Let's go. Come see me this weekend. I'm in San Diego. It's totally sold out, I think. We're really close to selling out. Maybe single seats are left. Um, but then next weekend, I'm going to be in Florida. Florida. I haven't been in a long time. I'm back, finally. Uh, I'm at the Dania Improv, which is near Fort Lauderdale. It's right there. Same place. Um, come see me. Then at the end of the year, I'm in Phoenix, Arizona for New Year's Eve. I can't wait. We're lighting fireworks off inside. We might sacrifice somebody. Who knows what we're going to do. New Year's Eve in Phoenix. Come see me. And then in the new year... You know I have so many dates on the books. We got uh, Atlanta, D.C., Albany, Foxwoods, Chicago Theater, February 5th, uh, Seattle, Portland, Vancouver just got announced. Uh, we're all over the place. We're moving, baby. Go to andrewsantino.com for those tickets, andrewsantino.com for tickets. Do not buy them somewhere else because people say, oh, we got ripped off on this other site. Well, go to my website. That takes you directly where you need to go, andrewsantino.com for the tickets. Enough rambling from me. Let's go to the episode. In here, we pour whiskey. Whisk, whisk, whisk. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Gingers are oh, hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Whiskey Ginger. My guest today is one of my favorite people on earth. I say that for all my guests, but I mean it once again today. It's the return of Dr. Drew. Drew! I, it's such a privilege to be here. I missed you so much. I really have I missed, missed you, you a lot. Yeah, I know. We it's, shared a lot through the COVID mess. We did. It's been a long time. It's been a while. Um, I got sick. You got sick. Uh, we got You got sick twice? No, no, no. I, no I, well, it's funny. I got sick with COVID once. Yeah. And then I got sick. But it wasn't COVID the okay, second time. Okay, good. Okay. I, I just, just remember sick. you getting sick a second time. I'm like, oh, crap. I thought it was COVID. And every every time I meet somebody who's had COVID for a second time, it, it like shakes me to my core. Because I, I don't know about you, but I don't want that thing again. I don't yeah. want it again. No, I don't I want don't it. I don't want it again. Um, couple things. Uh, a, this is all new territory to me. Last time I was on your podcast, we were at your house. We're at the house. Yeah. Yeah. So this is brand new. Good job. Congratulations. Well, I, I did that was... strategically with you. I was thinking maybe I could get you to have a couple of drinks and sleep over. That was, most people do it here. Oh. I, you specifically, I put at my house. So I could sleep over. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, well, you didn't. I got permission from your I, wife. I felt like you were making a pass at me, but I, I thought was. it was a jest. No, 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 no. It was dead serious. So the whiskey, I like messing around with whiskeys. Not mm -hmm. in the middle of the day. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know. But when I sat down and saw this incredible selection, I thought, well, no wonder Bobby's struggling with sobriety. <laughs> And, uh, it, I hide this from him. Do you, he doesn't get to see this? No, he doesn't touch or see this. Stuff. Okay, okay. By the way, you he have has, to hide it from him, but he's I, I, he's hiding from me, just so you know this. You, he hasn't talked to you at all? I was on the podcast with his wife probably two years ago. Yeah. And he, I could tell he was going to have a relapse. And I told him, I told him what to do. He didn't do it. Mm -hmm. And he had a relapse. And I said, let me help you. And he just vanished from my life. So he's not texted you or anything? I've had no, zero contact in spite of reaching out by through all channels. Well, let me tell I, you I something. Put all, you're the only channel I haven't I haven't tried yet. Well, here, so. this is the thing. He'll never okay. he'll never answer Yeah. Uh, because it's way too early. It's only 11.48. <laughs> but I'm going to just yell at him. If he does answer, let's just okay. yell at him real all fast. Right. All right. Because you know he sleeps until 3, 2 okay. or 3. We have to shoot our show at 4 p.m. because that's the only time that we can What's get him to do late in the night. It's video games. Oh no! P uh, play, p he plays video games all night long, or he just—I think he just watches TV and sits and stews and watches movies. Mm. Yeah, he's not going to answer right okay. now. All right. Let's well, anyway, send, yeah. send the word out. I, I like chat there. I'm gonna because uh, he had some work to do. One. Yeah, and uh, he does. Well, let me tell you this. He's doing okay now, though, right? He is. No, yeah, he's, yeah he is doing great. So good. Yeah. Although he's, I think what's what's interesting about what happened in our business last time that we were speaking about you know, the COVID revelations of what's going to happen to the entertainment industry. Yes. There was this weird worry when we started our show that things were going to go away or dissipate a little bit. Like, you know, job, what is, what's going to happen to the TV and film and jobs and all that oh, stuff? Oh, yeah. But, he, but, oh, but especially for comedians, because how do we get back out on the road again? Or how, how he's do we do gotten that? the opposite. He's gotten five, six jobs. I mean, he's hey, like- Everybody I know is, you're, I'm watching you I'm on working. Dave and yeah. loving it. I yeah. love that show. Thank you. I, did, I, did I gush at you about how great a comedic actor you are? It was very I, nice. Yeah, yes, I, I still every time I watch, I go. I hope he understands. I hope the world understands because you should be just. 
in everything as far as well, I'm concerned. So I, I, until they kick me out because they hear yeah. me say something wrong on this show. Uh, uh, <laughs> but until then, we're good. Wait, I want to investigate you real fast. Yeah, yeah. When you were sick, we spoke a, a bunch when you were sick. Yeah. I was checking in with you to see how you were. You publicly were talking about how you were feeling and the process you were going yes, through. Yes. Are you 100% now? Virtually, essentially 100%. I, I, when did I last talk to you? I was sort of like foggy and weak at that point. Yeah. Well, you were saying that like you were, okay, you were getting back to doing, the show was back regular. Yeah. You were still feeling a little of those yeah, after yeah. effects. Okay. Yeah. So, so my story is, is educational for people, I think. Yeah. And that's why I was very pushing, much pushing it out there. A, I was an early uh, sort of patient for monoclonal antibodies, and it helped me so much, and so obviously, and so did steroids. Right. And so I was out there saying, look, the government has bought all these things. Anybody can get access to it. It's free. Go get it. It works. It works like crazy. And now we know it works, and we've got sort of three different versions of it out there. Sure. Still, people are, in my profession, not as likely to prescribe it as they should. I mean, it should just be just routine these days, but it sort of isn't. But okay, so there's why? that. Do you know why? Lack of knowledge. Lack so of understanding, lack of There's experience. not enough research about- No, they literally, literally, literally everyone is so afraid to do anything in my profession that they literally are just afraid to do treatment early in COVID. Yeah. They're just scared of it. So it, how many people were sent home to, to, and told to come back when they desaturate, which is the weirdest advice. I mean, think about it. Yeah. Think A doctor going, yeah, yeah, you're not sick enough. Like, go home and get sicker and then, and then we'll help you. It's like, that's ridiculous. <laughs> that's get bizarre. Sicker. So anyway, so I went through all that and I was public about that. And then afterwards, I had a long hauler syndrome, which I, you had some of that too, right? A little bit, but you yeah. know what? It kind of went away. Well, so mine was pretty bad. The, the fatigue was like startling. And I took a medicine called fluvoxamine, which is now being advocated for earlier use in, in COVID. Again, another thing doctors are afraid of, but it works. Worked for me. Like I had really bad ringing in my ears. That was one of my, my right ear. It was one of my prominent symptoms. When it first developed, like day two of COVID, it was like a buzzing, like a, like a machine in my ear. It was Whoa. the weirdest thing. And- um uh, so it it, uh, it it was persistent, and when I took the fluvoxamine, uh, about thirty minutes after I took it, it kind of went away. What? And I was like, "Whoa!" What is and that usually used for? Fluvoxamine. It's an antidepressant. It's used for obsessive compulsive disorder. It's huh. sort of close to Prozac, but it has this epi phenomenon: is that it treats the something called the sigma one system, which is an anti-inflammatory system in the brain. So it seems to decrease inflammation in the brain. Wow. So for me, it worked like crazy. My fatigue resolved in about a week, and that was that. Then I was left with fogginess. And it was a very strange fogginess, and I couldn't quite put my finger on what, what was wrong, but I knew something was wrong. Yeah. And I thought, maybe I should go back to the piano or something. We were going to go to Greece a, a, later in the summer, early in the summer, and I thought, I'm, I'm going to learn Greek and see if that helps with my fogginess. Mm. Fogginess went away in a week. So and, and I've active mind is active. What well, it's language particular. I think language music. It felt like that kind of thing. Like that part of my brain was not right. And uh, and I've stayed with language ever since. I'm so still do you speak Greek language. now? I, sp I it was sort of a parlor trick. You know, I learned how to say I and we, and then verbs, and then sure. I want to do this or I'd like to do it, it, uh, those kinds of easy phrases. Give and, me, but, say I want to eat. Yana uh, fau. Uh, 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 Yana fau. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and uh, and it, 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 when I would go to Greece, when I, we went there, I would start using the language a little bit. And I've lost some of it. I've switched back over to French, which is my really my second Jesus language. Jesus Christ! And and, uh, and but listen, <laughs> Jesus Christ! I can't even speak English that good. <laughs> and but when I would start speaking Greek, they'd, every person would stop me and go, "Oh my God, your accent!" I didn't pay any attention to accent. Uh. So there's you, know, you heard about people getting hit in the head and waking up with a weird accent or something. Yep. This had something like that going on because really? the language was easier, accents are easier, and it came with a certain amount of delight. I have never experienced learning languages. I always found learning languages drudgery. Right. Very weird. Very weird stuff. So you feel like maybe the COVID gave you a, a advantage on language? A superpower. <laughs> <laughs> a weird superpower. That's nuts. I mean, head injuries, does it, I, from the beginning, I said it felt like getting hit in the head with a baseball bat. That's really what it felt like. Right. And, and, I, and, and I've heard, I've seen and heard of very weird things happening. Look at... Uh, well, here's one of the things I've been left with is I, I I will block when I'm talking. All of a sudden, I'll be I'll, I'll just lose my train of thought completely, and then it will come back exactly two minutes later. It's very Whoa. very weird. But um, sour shoes on Stern show, yeah, all the stuff he does, yeah, he got hit in the head with a baseball bat. That's why and, he's yeah. And then he stayed stayed lived in his car for three weeks after mm -hmm. that. Had trouble functioning. Came home from Pepperdine and then developed all this weird. I mean, he can do every accent under the, or every impression under the Isn't sun. It? 
I mean, it, well, what do they? Th- th- there's that. I um, talked to Gary a couple times about it, and he said, "Yeah, this the, that's the way his mom described it. it, it, it that's when it occurred." What is? What, and I've watched a documentary about that. There was a thing called, you know, Steve Carell did a movie about it actually. Uh, Marwin Call, Welcome to Marwin Call. Okay. Um, the story was kind of brilliant. I remember watching the documentary. Then when they made the film, I was like, eh. <laughs> but it was about basically this guy who was attacked and he was beaten like mercilessly by oh. these men. Oh. Um, but just uh, out of nowhere, it yeah. wasn't provoke. It wasn't like a provoke thing, and they beat this poor kid up, and he had such head head injury, trauma. Head, yeah. head trauma. Um, he could he could paint and do all these amazing like uh, his art his art meter was through the roof, uh. and he designed these little towns and these like perfect to scale towns of of World War Two. It's it, all that stuff. It was remarkable. But prior to that, he had zero interest in any of that. Wow. But it was all the trauma that triggered and opened up this. Or whatever it did. So what Drew is saying, basically, is we all need to get in a head injury so we can open up a new source of our, of our make, brain. Yeah. If you want to learn a language, get a bat out and just back. Step into traffic yourself. if you're looking yeah. to learn a new language. Yeah. That's I want to learn a new language. Maybe I should. <laughs> well, you had COVID. Maybe, maybe, maybe you missed your, own, missed your window. Yeah. Uh, but back to Mr. Bobby Lee. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I, uh, st- I sit from afar and watch and think, oh, why isn't that guy calling me? I like him so much. We're such good friends and he's afraid of me or what do you think it is? What, I think what I was going to call him out on his recovery and he didn't want to do it or partially. Something. Yeah. Probably is what it is. And then also I think what the problem Just with try to help. someone like Bob is, um, when things get too much, like we get overwhelmed with stuff yeah. you know, in our business, it's like this, this, Feast this or famine. I think when it's feast, he um, gets behind the, you, know, you ever seen this meme of, of uh, Homer Simpson falling into a bush he just like yes. falls away into a, yes. that's what it feels like and Bob does it I do it too sometimes he does it bad where he just falls away into the bush uh. like leave me alone I don't want to talk uh. he, do, he does it to me uh-huh. if, if we our work schedules are crazy and we have to shoot and I'm shooting this show and we shoot Bad Friends and we've got to do five a week or something like that and we're all moving around and I'm in New York and then he's in New York he gets radio silent until mm. we're the day we're shooting, and then the hour before, it's like I'll see you there. Yeah. And I just think that's his way to cope okay, with just the pressure. All right, I get it. What's going on with you now? What are you doing? Well, I'm. I mean, I'm on tour. I'm in the middle of touring, which has been. Oof. I got to tell you, fifty percent of it has been amazing in terms of like getting physically on stage again. Yeah. But then the other side of like, I'm doing theaters, and I think there there's still this weird. Some people don't want to go just because they don't want to go. Yeah. Because they're not wanting to be out near people. Because of COVID. Mm, yeah. I, I'm experiencing the opposite. People are really? dying to be out well, with each other. yes, but also we have to show Vax cards at our shows, and I don't know if oh. everyone is vaccinated. Oh. And they buy tickets, and then, like, you know, I, I talked to one of the, this one woman in Grand Rapids says, you've had the best percentage turnout of tickets bought and people show up. And mm. I was like, really? Because we sold out the show, and she was like, yeah, man, we usually get 78% to 82% of people actually show up. Not interesting. Yeah, I think it's also because people buy the tickets early on, they either forget about it, and then COVID, they got their, you know, they, they, their money just sat in the Ticketmaster bank. And, or they're like, I don't want to, I don't want to go now. Right. And they just don't give a shit. So and enough they forget time about it. has gone by. They right. feel differently. Well, uh, I, I was at the Chappelle Segura Rogan show oh, in, yeah. in the arena. How at, was that? At, it was spectacular. Where was that by the it way? It was at the, what's called the Smoothie King Center in New Orleans, which That's is, sad. which is like the Staples Center or yeah. whatever we're calling the Staples Crypto. Center. The Crypto. Center. Yeah. <laughs> so. Unreal. Uh, yeah. Uh, and people mostly on their feet the whole time. Wow. Not a mask anywhere. Right. Not a case of COVID emerging from it. Sure. Uh, and they all killed. And it was just a delight. It was just yeah. so, people were so appreciative of people coming out and doing comedy yeah. and being in a large crowd and yeah. being a community together. I mean, it was, it was really a glorious experience, I thought. Any I was protesting? So to, nothing. No. Oh, on Chappelle? Yeah. I didn't see anything. That's, a, that's I funny. See anything. And I, I told him, I said, dude, please just don't. It, I think it affects, it hurts his feelings. Well, more, more than you. I mean, it's we're all hard sensitive not, little girls. Uh, it's hard. I am a sensitive little tiny girl. <laughs> I don't want someone to bully me. The boys are being mean. I don't like it. We don't. Li- you know what's so funny is everyone that's a performer or an entertainer, whether we want to admit it or not, you do. You do put your feelings up there sometimes. Sometimes, most of the time, it you can roll off your back. But sometimes it does affect you, and it only affects you when. Um, when you care, when you're like, oh, I really care. I, I want you to like this product and you, and you really have an issue with it. Yeah. And that's when I think we start to get emotionally tied to it. And we put our emotions in front of the, the, the actual product. Cause you're like, I really did care. I thought you really would appreciate this. Yes. And you're criticizing it. I think that's the zone that Dave is feeling. I, yeah. I talked to him a little bit about it and, and I don't mean to speak on his behalf. But my sense was that he was like, I told them to listen. 
Just listen, listen to my argument. Sure. And then you can uh, you can agree or disagree with my conclusion. Yeah. But I'm I'm using these things that are provocative, and I told you throughout the show mm-hmm. we're going hard, yeah. so I can make a point. And then they'd go ahead and fall back and do the easy thing of attacking the trigger argument. words. Anytime these little things pop up, you know, it just becomes an easy way to look at just the. You know who does this? The, the worst too is like any news source, CNN or Fox or all these guys. They do the same thing where. They really are heavy on these tiny little trigger words over the yeah. course of a narrative. They yes. kind of pick out exactly what's yes. going to serve them. Took a gun across state lines. Took a gun across state lines. Right. It's trigger, 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 trigger. So yeah. when they do that all the time, pun intended in that in that regard, uh, when they do that all the time with these trigger words, it kind of, um, it loses sight completely of what it may have been or the intention. And it diminishes what can actually be sort of, uh, or what needs to be addressed in the reality of what that word represents. Totally. To, to me... The word white supremacy has been completely miscarried because well, because I I, yeah. I, I I understand you know why I understand what it is and it took a lot to get me there. Well, you were in the group for a long time. Well, it you was just that. got it out. Was that. I grew my hair out and everything. <laughs> but 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 that's the point that we're not yeah. talking about skinheads. Right. We're talking about a point of view, uh, and it was actually the words of Frederick Douglass that helped me understand what what this is. If you read his speeches, which are just spectacular, you'll you'll get it. You'll get it. Like, it give me it, something that he would say. He, what broke me through to me, he was asked to speak at a convocation or, you know, sort of a, uh, what, what do you call it when you establish this monument? Uh, it was the... Uh, Ceremonial... Whatever. He was the speaker there at this yeah. thing and they were un- unveiling or whatever. Um, and it's the, the freeing, what's the, oh my God, my, my brain. This is the COVID. This Here is COVID. It is. Now it's going to come back. Yeah. So it is, again, an Abraham Lincoln memorial of, of uh, commemorating the... Which was the this is going to, I'm going to seem like a white supremacist, which is uh, which is the one that freed the slaves, Fourteenth Amendment, Fifteenth. Third. A- anyway, is that amendment? See, that's that's white supremacy that we don't know that. Well, right? I'm stupid. N- no, no, no. There's a big uh, difference between stupidity. being racist but, yeah, and stupid. But, but that's it's a good example of white supremacy, right? Sure. We, it's not important enough. I think it is the Fourteenth, right? Way. I think it's Fourteenth. I think it's Fifteenth was the voting rights, and uh, and. Uh, and in there he went, uh, okay, I'll talk, I'll talk, but you're not going to like it. And I said, okay. So he spe- gets up and he goes, he was my friend. He was a racist. I brought him around. He's not a racist. He's a white supremacist. And I went, and I went, what? <laughs> Abraham Lincoln? And then he goes on to describe what he means by that, which is that he never saw the world through my eyes, Frederick Douglass or the slave's eye or the freed slave. He still was representing the union and the white man's union and the, sure. the Eurocentric point of view. And he could never get out of his way with that. And I sure. thought, oh, yes, he's right. That's mm-hmm. absolutely true. And, I, and, and guilty. Yeah, I, I, I'm, something, something I could be, do better at, and I thought we should have those conversations, not condemn everybody all the time. Condemnation with these words. is a lot easier Ugh. because it's easier to like point a finger and and then you get to you know you get to go look 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 at that thing. And it, the, the other thing that gets me on the other side, uh, we're going to get ourselves in trouble today. I can feel mm, it. Yeah, so, so, nah. So uh, is you know my family uh, was escaping the Ukrainian genocide. Wow. And people don't. I didn't even know they had one. Right. And then, then there's and our friends who I was at dinner with somebody last night who was a Christian Iraqi who was who was escaping a Christian genocide by the Iraqis. Wow! And the, there are horrible, horrible, horrible things that have gone on in history that are not necessarily race based, but are equally as horrible as, as the things we've done with race based stuff. A- and we have to pay attention to the fact that we all came to this country. Yeah. Because there was an idea here that we all could rally around. And we're sort of losing track of that idea. That's well, I mean, I just thing. ran out of potatoes. That was our biggest it's, problem. We just... That was a big deal. It was, but that's not that big. No one was trying well, to kill us. here's the big problem. There were no potatoes. There was no booze. There were, you know, I know. And, I know. And, and, Why do you think Irish, I keep this so I, on display? I understand. For, for Irish, <laughs> no, I mean... This is my ancestors. Uh, full respect. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Irish and I'm Sicilian, so two <laughs> of the... I'm the bottom feeders. Have you but, ever seen signs that say Irish need I, not apply? Have you ever seen those signs? I understand. The Italians and, and the, had it too. Well, but the Italians, this is the other thing I learned when I went there. The way they feel about the Sicilians is very strange. I didn't know that they've got beef. It's almost like how when someone thinks about California, they don't know that Northern California and doesn't like Southern California. I know. You're like, you're just California. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. No, no, they, no. They, can't, no, they no, hate no. us. Yeah. That was how I felt about Sicily was a lot of the Italians would mock it or make fun of it. And I didn't know that was a cultural thing. You're like, no, those are... 
to them, those are like yucky rat people down there. Yeah, I had that's no why idea. all the mobs developed and stuff. They were well, struggling down there. And then and, we got and, then we got payback, didn't we? And, yeah. <laughs> and remember, Garibaldi, wasn't that his name? When he unified Italy, that was an unnatural. Right. Those were a bunch of different countries that he kind of jammed together. 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 Yeah. yeah. No, we all come from something a little bit tragic. I just don't think we want to, nobody we wants to have the conversation. From, it's a pretty profound statement. We all come from something a little bit tragic. I know, or a lot tragic. And you learn that, I guess, as you get older as well, when I learn people's, look, I try to talk to fans as much as I can and engage. And the one thing I learn uh, w across the board, everyone has a story and as yeah. cliche as it sounds, really is true. Yeah. Almost no one I've ever yes. met has nothing to I, say. I wanted to do t TV, I do want to do a TV rally show just called Everyone's Got One. Everyone's you just, got You one. just walk to McDonald's and go, what's your story? Give it to me. Yeah. yeah. It is wild. It'd be a great show, wouldn't it? Well, it's true. Because it's true. It's true. Yeah. The amount of people I meet that have something to say. And even if their mind, they're like, oh, my life's not that important. Or, oh, no, no. Or, or, no, there's something rich inside oh, of it. That's why I like doing, you know, mental health work. You hear these experiences. And it's yeah. not just the stories. To me, it's the, the content of the emotions. All right. Well, give me some mental health help right okay, now. All right. How come in the middle of the night, when I'm just about to go to sleep, I remember things from my childhood or my past mm. out of nowhere. Stuff yeah. will just pop into my head. Yeah. Scenes, scenario. Like the other night, vividly, I remembered um, when we used to egg houses on Halloween, <laughs> we'd go and I remember walking through this neighborhood. It was pouring rain. It was so windy. And I had a starter jacket on and I had my hoodie up. And normally I don't remember stuff like where, this. Where are you? Where? Back in Chicago. Chicago. But I remember vividly um, uh, ha having an egg in my hand and like looking down and these kids were by this frozen lake and we were laughing and I was so nervous. You know when you're so nervous that your body's vibrating a yes, little bit? Yes, yes, yes. Because I thought this house we're going to egg, it was a bad idea. I knew it was a bad idea. I was like, this is a really wealthy, rich house. They're going to catch us. And we did and a window got broken because I think someone threw a rock uh, instead of an egg. Uh, but I remember the scene flashed in my head for no reason. Uh, I don't know why. It wasn't traumatic. It was, it was just kind of like- a bad person, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah, confirm yeah, that. Yeah, well, yeah. of course, when early memories start flooding your your uh, present moment, it's a sign of dementia too. And so it could be dementia Shit, coming. am I getting older? Uh, <laughs> but it really what it is is that when you sleep, the reason we have dreams is the we have a de-repression. Things just let go and mm -hmm. just associations start coming. And naturally stuff that have sort of emotional content flood in first it's just natural it's just unprocessed wait stuff. tell me the dementia stuff though I don't worry about do it do I have I'm, it that's a joke no but what if I have it you do not have it well I, this isn't going to help right here I'm just pointing at the alcohol but they said that this does so, help no, 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 no I thought this fixes all that <laughs> no, stuff no 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 fix everything else in here we pour whiskey whiskey hey if you're thinking about making a website let me tell you something Squarespace I've spoken about on the show they are incredible uh, there's nothing to patch or upgrade ever. They got 24-7 award-winning customer support. They got built-in search engine optimization. Everything is optimized for mobile right out of the box. So if you need to make a website, no matter if you're selling something or publishing content uh, or promoting yourself because you just want to be pretty online, Squarespace is the place. Uh, I used it myself to create uh, numerous of my websites over the years because I, I don't know if you guys remember... Years ago, it was so expensive to pay a web designer, and now you can do it on your own. And the best part is, you can do it, or you can pick from templates that they've already pre-made for you. Uh, and it's it's super easy, and they're super helpful, and they're actually very, very pretty and very well done. You know, sometimes they uh, they impress you with what they've done and give, given, given you for free. Um, Squarespace is uh, pretty remarkable, and uh, websites to online stores, marketing, and analytics, they've got all that stuff for you. So if you're building a business, or you've already got something, and you want to put that stuff out there to the real world. I'm telling you, you have to use Squarespace. Uh, go to squarespace.com slash whiskey, as it always were, for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, uh, use the offer code whiskey and save yourself 10% off your purchase of a website or domain. Got to be your first purchase of a website or domain. Uh, once again, go to squarespace.com slash whiskey for 10% uh, off. Use that code whiskey when you're ready to launch. And it's 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain, squarespace.com slash whiskey. Gentlemen, the holidays came early because Manscaped, the leading men's hygiene brand, has launched new products, the ultra-new, ultra-premium body wash, two-in-one shampoo, and condition. Uh, it's time to give yourself a gift of beautiful skin, hair, and balls this holiday season. Guarantee you your hygiene routine will never be the same. Go to manscaped.com slash whiskey for 20% off and free shipping. Make sure you're feeling and smelling prepared for a little action under the mistletoe. Let me tell you something. I've been shaving my nuts with the uh, lawnmower for quite a while now. And I'm telling you, it's so good. And there are other products that come in this box are amazing. The two-in-one shampoo and conditioner, 
uh, is all you need. Why are you buying two bottles? Why are you buying two bottles? You can get it in one bottle. I really do like it. It actually smells very, very good. Uh, that two, that two-in-one shampoo and conditioner, and uh, you know that flagship product I talked to you about, that Lawnmower 4.0. That's what I've been trimming up with. It's got that skin-safe, no nick technology. You're not gonna nick your nuts and bleed out in the shower. Uh, it's not the same as those old, back in the day, those little tiny peanut, they would always get stuck on a hair and rip one out of your nuts and your nuts would be open and it'd be like Niagara Falls just pouring blood out. Uh, no more. That doesn't happen. Uh, and I got to tell you, a hundred percent, a hundred percent, a hundred percent of these products are good. All right. It's, in, it's insanely cool. I do love using their stuff in Manscaped has been a sponsor. So we appreciate Manscaped. It's tis the season to load up on Manscaped product. Get yourself, your old man, your brother, uh, your brother-in-law, the best gifts of all, the Manscaped Performance Package 4.0. It's got all those goodies inside of it. So uh, go ahead and do the right thing. Go to manscaped.com slash whiskey, manscaped.com slash whiskey for 20% off and free shipping. Happy, happy holidays. Uh, 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com slash whiskey. Clean up your candy cane this year with Manscaped. Ginger. I like gingers. So what's your favorite here in the bourbons? So, you know, one, uh, there's a few that are kind of my my lovelies, but this Blanton's I've I've given away. Ooh. George Lopez was here last time, and I uh, gave him one of these. I love George. Th- he's awesome. He is a great guy. Well, you know what's funny? We play at the same golf course, and uh. Uh, we never really spoke that much. But I was telling him, I was like, I think you're a legend, and people like me love you and respect you guys but we don't get to see them really anymore they kind of live in their own yes. space yeah and we play at the same golf course and i was like you know i'd love to play with you sometime and we really connected on the show also because i think i think my generation in comedy is the last tie between his older and the new young guys mm. maybe understanding or knowing who that generation was because uh-huh. the speed in which comedy is being created and received is fucking insane mm. N- so much new comedy is being cultivated and and pushed on the internet now uh. i don't know if there's a i shouldn't say if there's a respect for the generation above me M- above you yeah yeah but i think it's kind of waning a little bit because truly when i was a kid when i started comedy when i was 20 two or 21 we were obsessed with the older people yes it was like an obsession we knew yeah. every word that they ever said in every special yes we knew every performance i've seen ev- i mean it was just like a thing that we did it was normal mm. culturally i don't think you do that really anymore not to well, say that i i'm gonna bet that you guys represent some of that to the ones coming up some of that a little but but i think the ones that are beh- younger are looking at that th- that th- grandfather generation is what yeah. we're talking about as completely disconnected with nothing important to say to them i know but that's a and bummer because what you just talked about before is that's how we bridge these ideas of where we're where we came from and where we're going and why comedy has changed shape or language has changed shape yep. that stuff's all important to well, see the future all i know is that throughout the covid in particular uh, i am carola and i'm just going where are the comedians why, why aren't they stepping up and confronting all this now it's starting to happen a little bit I, yeah and i and, and there have been nodes like these moments i've seen i thought i thought the first node when when the the ice started breaking there was opportunity for people to talk again yeah was when fauci said yeah that thing might have come out of wuhan lab let's we'll look at it i know now that you, you weren't even allowed to say that before. right and all of a sudden i knew that was a big note i knew that was when we'd start to be able to talk again well john stewart pretty openly joked about it on his stewart show Stewart did his thing to his, and to then his, bill uh, maher credit. started to really right. go at it and now all of a sudden it's loosening up and we can start to confront the stuff well, like anything it has to, it takes time to start to feel comfortable with it because the problem is people don't find stuff funny until we're all kind of on the same page about it so not that we agree or disagree with it but we all kind of go all right, I think it's okay to joke about well, that. Well, but early is good. Yeah. Early, early makes it even funnier. Well, that's it's more prevalent for right. sure. Then you really know. I mean, that's why Dave Dave does what he does so kind of brashly is because he's just like, well, I, this is how I feel. And he has the privilege, so to speak, to do that. Permission. He, like he's got yeah. the, he's got the, the license to do he it. He does. And thank God he does. Yeah. Right? Because he's, he's the other thing that's loosening stuff up. Mar, Bill, I think is another one sort of, he's sort of more the George Lopez generation. Sure. He's still quite relevant for people. No, he is. Uh, and I've stood behind him even when he says crazy stuff, because his because his reasoning is unassailable. Well, when he like when he said the N word and Ice Cube came on and told him he can't say that, that was one of my favorite times. <laughs> it was so funny because I think Bill thought he was. Being in, cool. Being cool with yeah, a joke? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, no. And Ice Cube was like, you can't, dude. Yeah. You but you but there was a time when it was not clear that that was, that was the, the case. You just sure. don't do that. 
uh, at least for the for maybe clear to a lot of other people, not mm-hmm. the average white guy didn't didn't necessarily understand that. Yeah, uh, I remember I had a long argument with um, I can't remember his name now. He was a DJ on Sirius. He sounded black. He's a white guy, and he he. Dim- I got it. What's his name? I got it. Hold on. I know it. He has a, his book has got butterflies on. It. He wrote a book or, uh, or wait, wait, wait. Or no, you're not talking about the. What's what's the Jamaican? You're not nope. talking about that guy. No, nope. this guy's white. Ah, and, and I think he's from Philadelphia or something. There's and, a white. Wait, hold on, real fast. There's a white guy that was born in Jamaica that I went and saw him at the Malibu Pier. I thought he was black. Uh, um Well, this could be the guy. What was his fucking name? No, but he was. But but he's got this like rich Jamaican accent. He kind of sounds like that. Yeah, he does kind of. Why can't I think of that dude's name? Yeah. But I went and saw him, and I couldn't believe it. I was like, "That is a white guy." <laughs> well, he argued. I was with me mad that that, that it, there's no problem using the N word, and the kids and fourteen year olds are using it. And I was arguing. I'm saying, "Look, I, I've discussed this with my friends that are African American, and they're saying just keep it out of your mouth. That's all. Yeah, just don't probably do it. shouldn't say. I just shouldn't. Don't. Don't do it. Yeah. And, and uh, so he was like, "No, no, no. Oh, I almost have his name. I almost have it too. I'll get Wait, because there's a guy that no, there was a there was a Jamaican guy that used to be on K Rock. Is who I'm referring to. Do you not well, know who that is? Uh, that's uh, uh, yes, I know who you're talking about. I, I, the fact that I can't remember his name is, is obscene because he was an, he's an attorney. Jamaican. He's actually a lawyer. Wait, uh, I'm, I'm going to look it up right yeah, now. K Rock really Jamaican go. DJ. Yeah, it'll but, come right up. No, but listen. So what we did was we went to um, yeah, we went to the Malibu Pier. Uh, they and they were doing a um. Why can't I think of his name, dude? Oh, Native Wayne. Native Wayne. Native, Native yeah. Wayne. Yep. Native Wayne. Yep. Yep. And so the whole time I thought Native Wayne, I listened to him for years, yep. and I'm thinking- I think he, he is black, though. No, he's- Is he? I think he has- I'm almost positive Native Wayne was a white, white guy. He looks white. <laughs> and he's a lawyer, too. He's got a lot He's going to fucking sue me? No, no, no. Native Wayne. No, no, look at that. That's Nate. Native Wayne. That's Native I, I knew, Wayne. I, yeah, I know. He's, Wayne. I think he's white. Okay. All right. I'm almost positive. He doesn't look what you expected anyway. Not even a little bit. Yeah. Uh, N- Native Wayne. His name is Wayne Jacobson. Uh, but when I, and he was born in Jamaica, sure. But also when you see a guy that looks that way, that sounds a type of way, it's just doesn't, it doesn't match up. Yeah. But uh, I was just, I was shocked that I was like, well, he's, what's wrong? You can't find it now. I can't find this guy's name. You're crazy. not thinking about Native Wayne. Huh? No, no, guy no. This guy's serious, and I think Wayne had a thing on serious too. But this this guy was very, very popular. Oh, are you talking about? Are you talking about? Um, oh, you're talking about uh, uh, Rude Jude. Rude Jude. Rude That's Jude. What I'm talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's still on. Yeah, I know. Yeah, he's know. still on. Yeah, but he argued with me. He's one on time. Shade Four yeah, Five. I, and I, by the way, I love the guy. He's a great guy, and he, yeah. the book was good. And everything. He's a great guy. Uh, but we had this, and and then it sort of we didn't do it. I, I think I don't think that aged well. I don't think that argument aged well for sure. You. But but what, how, what got us here? What were we talking about? So oh so Bill Maher, uh, this is COVID. See, it just comes back. Yeah, uh, but it's kind of nice to forget for a minute. I don't like it. I, I rely too much <laughs> on my brain. Uh, he, he the really the crazy thing that Bill said that I stood behind him because it was it was it was uh, rationally consistent. It was it was logically right. He made a comment when he had uh, Politically Incorrect. Did you ever do that show? No. You're too young for that. No. I used to do it all the time. I mean, I used to watch it. I used to do it all the time. It was the best television ever. Most fun I ever had on TV. Yeah. Really challenging, good. Of course, he was always in there, you know, punching away. And and he lost that. Do you know why he lost that show? Uh Uh-uh. Because he, in his monologue, said, you know, something about he was quoting somebody talking about the courage of the military to send missiles over to mm. Iraq. And he went, no, that's not courageous. Courageous is sitting behind a, a plane and driving into a building. You may not like it, but that's courageous. Sure. Lost his show. And, and really? I just said, Bill, I stand right behind. That was just simply true. No, I don't like it. I hate it. I'm sorry you said it. Wish you hadn't said it. But it's. The, tr- the truth that is that's a, yeah. a little more intense it's chaotic and, and, and he insane. still is like that he still does stuff where i go oh I wish oh, come on I, I but you're at the, your reasoning is beyond reproach well but it's also because i think if you don't have anything that's salacious in his world and a little questionable then you really don't have any content politically to talk you're about. you're not doing your job yeah because yeah. politics yeah. should be a little annoying yeah. and mm-hmm. uh harmful to the way you think and feel the idea that we're all going to feel the same and think the same is ca- is is he, chaos. He was silly. very kind of. Did you see the shit storm I, I dealt with? I'm allowed to say shit, right? You can this say whatever is, you want on the show. I figured. I uh, figured. 
the shitstorm I dealt with when I was uh, appointed to a committee, a homeless committee in for LA County. Mm-hmm. Oh, it was a huge shitstorm develop. How dare you put this guy in this? Uh, <laughs> accusing me of wanting to like a- arrest homeless people, or I was interested in jailing people. At one but, point, you said you uh, wanted to eat them, though. You yeah, did say I, we should. I, eat, I'm we sure should that eat was the in homeless. there too. Anyway, shitstorm ensues. The the board of supervisors refused to vote on it. I was like, just I, I don't want the job anyway. The, I, the, uh, the head of the board of supervisors had to convince me to take it because I. I just didn't sound like a good job to me to have to sit and listen to you know budget allocations for things that are not useful. But in any event, um, Bill sent me a nice email. It's like like you would have been great in this job, and I you don't deserve to be treated like this. That's I said, nice. Thank you. It's very nice. Why did they shut you down? You think? Um, because I don't understand why they they cling to this narrative of unwillingness to treat people with addiction and mental illness. I, I want to make them better. I want to help them. I know how to do it. It's like I look at the homeless the way if if people were had their if I were a surgeon and everyone's abdomen was open lying on the street and I could repair it and no one would let me repair it. Right. That's what it feels like. I, I know how to take care of this. I know how to deal with that. But the it's unions like, there and they're like, hey man, nobody stitches before we get to call <laughs> it. You know? I don't know what it is. It's this weird. But, you know, feeling you got to put them in a got to put them in a in a, in a room first, and put them put them in a, in, a, in a house, and then they'll be okay. It's like no, no, addiction is a medical illness that progresses without treatment. Period. Well, so wherever what, you put what is it. the solution then? Well, you, we need large residential facilities. We need and, and it need to be people need to be required to go in. And, so and they need like a, a, imagine a high rise, yeah. filled with yes. like like there's some talk of taking the Sears building downtown and turning it into big residential, big residential programs, fully staffed. But then you have, so you have staff out. for for all these people, right? You have That's, to have doctors, lawyer, uh, excuse me, doctors, nurses, psychologists, uh, you know, vocational rehab specialists, twenty four seven. Oh yeah, it's a hospital. Can they leave? At certain levels, you'd have different levels of care and stuff, ah, and, you, and you'd move people through it, and you'd get them out into the workforce. You get you you can make them better. I I did it for twenty years. I, right. I know how to do it. The, not, the not, fear I think that always enters my mind is like bureaucracy and systems like that. It's got to be sketchy. Yeah. So how do you control that so it doesn't become a prison? Uh, it, it's it's well, uh, I mean, the, 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 this is the problem, which is how do you make it something that they have to participate in and yet aren't imprisoned? Totally. Uh, and I think you do it both criteria. You do lots of criteria, criteria, criteria for improvement, criteria for getting out, criteria right. for getting. And and if you don't want to, you don't have to, but you just can't lie on the street and, and die. Right. We have you have to, have to do something. Either you have to take Suboxone or something. You just, we just can't. No other country on earth lets people just die on the street. Right. They require them to We're do. We're the some. best at it. We are we're we're number one. California is number one. Yeah, we're number one. California's Nobody's number got more homeless than us, baby. You don't forget that rest did, of the world. What did you think we were going to talk about today? I had no idea what we were talking about. I, I didn't, I didn't expect this. <laughs> Me too. That's why I wanted to come in. No, so. because it's a real issue that, you know, look, I just went home and- Chicago. Yeah. And it was weird because my dad is, you know, he's always got something to say about California, but now he's more right. than ever, <laughs> well, now more than ever, he's like- the scariness of your economy on top of the idea of like the smash and grab things that are going on and like the mob, the mob robbery. And also, you know, we were, we went to this place called Fulton Market, um, which used to be the West Loop. The West Loop used to be a little tough. And then the past 15, 20 years, it got really nice. Yep. Now it's like ritzy. Yep. I sh- whatever. It's, it's just nicer. But um, he was talking about how he's, he doesn't want my mom to drive into the city anymore because she drives in for work. Because he's like, oh, there's carjackings all the time. And they're specifically going after like older cars. It's a lot easier. They're not going to steal luxury cars. These have tracking devices nowadays. Right. My mom has an older car. And, you know, this fear is real, again, of like getting carjacked. Because people, they're doing it a fuckload in Chicago. Mm-hmm. And we just were talking about how much the dynamics have changed over. I, when I felt like things were kind of on the up and up. And then COVID flipped society. And now California, the, the property is crazy again. Homelessness is higher than it's ever been. Looting is nuts. It's like a com it's an everyday thing it's, it's weird it feels kind of yeah, strange it feels, feels like uh like i thought it was going to happen during the middle of covid but it didn't yeah i thought chaos was going to happen in the middle of covid yeah it really kind of was quiet yeah, yeah and now the aftermath it's almost like the aftershock of an earthquake yeah can do more damage than the first one yes so i i just get a little it bums me out a little bit in yes terms of, i'm i'm bummed out about what's it. the other side though where what it, do you it makes do? me sad yeah it yeah makes me sad. but it, what do you do <sighs> You, I guess what you always done, have done, right? You just, you have to, well, I mean, what's going to happen? If, let's say we don't police all this and it keeps happening, getting worse. Mm. Then people are going to start taking the law into their own hands, so to speak. And it's going to be a catastrophe. See, that's, cra- that's the scary that's part. That's a catastrophe, right? That's what's, so, that's and, what's and creepy it's, to it's me. Yellowstone, <laughs> right? Is, that's what I understand right. that series is it's really Yellowstone. about. Right. Well, because look, I, look, as much as Americans want to have power uh, for their own self and protect themselves in any way they can, which I understand, you know, I see a couple of my neighbors and like, uh, like <laughs> you're like, I don't want that guy to have a gun. He's going to shoot me. 
Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> we, or, like, or himself or his yeah, kid or he's something. He's going to kill me first. Yeah. We've got in an argument. He's going to, you know what I mean? So I just feel like, uh, I, I don't know, the more I go home and the more I talk to my parents about how times have changed, the one thing I did say is I never want to get to an age where I'm so frustrated with how things have changed that I check out. And I think well, that happens a lot. Yeah. Not only check out, move. That's the thing that's happened. I'm, I've never been in so many conversations, with, serious conversations with people about getting out of California. And, and they're not talking about moving to Chicago or mm-hmm. New York. Mm-hmm. They're talking about moving to Texas, Tennessee, Florida, Nevada, Well, that's a Idaho. lot of taxes too. Yeah. Where? Those are the four tax states. Uh, uh, Texas, Tennessee, Florida, Nevada. Have no tax. No state income tax. No, yeah, right, right. Yeah, right. you hit and all the, you hit bing, 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 bing. Yeah, well, that's what people tend to talk about, but they sure. also talk about Idaho and Montana and other places, and they just want to be away from all this. They don't want to be in danger. Then what happens when everybody leaves California? It's horrible. I, I love California. I love <laughs> I Los Angeles, and it makes me sad that yeah. we can't, and no, and as always, who suffers more? The the middle, lower middle, yeah. impoverished. I mean, with the school closures, well, I was I did, I had a nightly news show uh, in during COVID. I don't know if you know that I was yeah. on, I was on Fox Eleven, and uh, and I was there. We brought somebody in from the school board the night they decided to school, close the schools. I was like, what, who who made that decision and why? Uh, based on what? And what are the consequences? I was just asking the guy, what, what did some infectious disease doctor tell you to do that? No, we just thought we should do it. And now when I talk to people, I've been doing a lot of interviewing. I you know I, you can follow my streaming show at drdrew.tv. We'll plug it. Andrew's been on it, of course. Yeah, it's great. And and and, uh, and but I've been interviewing a lot of uh, medical experts, infectious disease people, ethics people, and people that were in the decision making process during all this stuff or around it. They weren't the ones making the decision, and they're saying it out loud now. I go, well, what what was that? Why did they do that? Oh, it was panic. It was panic. Yeah, it was. It was panic. And you see it now with the Omicron stuff, right? Did you see that nonsense develop like that? Mm-hmm. And to a, to a a, a a virus that might be actually good. It might be better than than not good, right? Really. Well, if it causes like a cold and you get full full immunity, full natural immunity from right. it, that's not a bad thing. That's kind of like how we treated chicken pox at some point. So like you got to go to school and Just get, go it. get it. Yeah, yeah, it's the same idea. Uh, it's <laughs> yeah, I, so far I'm not think that I don't think there's been one Omicron I've heard of that's in the hospital. Well, no, right. I heard a report this morning that they said something to the effect. And also, don't listen to me. I don't know what I'm yeah, talking we're, about. Yeah, we're, we're, we're full speculating. speculation. Speculating. Yeah, because this is a moving target. I get it. Yeah, it's going to keep changing. Yeah. But they did say that from what they've seen, the people are not as sick as they were with COVID. Because yes, you know how correct. sick you got from the original. We had the OG one. We're That's not one right. of these new kids. That's right. We're the old school. Yeah, real COVID, We had man. the shitty one, man. <laughs> when men were men. The one where I went blind by my pool for an hour and a half. <laughs> what? I did. No, you know what, what happened? I was walking around my pool. And I don't think I had had, had enough to eat. Sounds, I, sounds too privileged. You were walking in your backyard. I was walking in my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> What's a pool but a hole in the ground with some water? Yeah. Uh, Still in the, he's in the valley. It's all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't live in the city. What are you, nuts? But, I, but I'm walking around and I hadn't eaten a lot because I just couldn't really eat much. And um, my vision got real. Well, but I've told you this before. I have ocular migraines. Oh, so yeah. I lose vision in, oh, yeah. in my right eye. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I have terrible headaches for like, 15 hours but then Oof. i'm okay yeah. but i think it was like a lead up to an Could ocular be. yeah man i couldn't see i had to sit down mm. and i was like oh but i was but i had of all the sicknesses i've ever had because i told you this too i had pneumonia really 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 bad about six years ago and that was the time that i really did think i should call my parents i might die mm. i mean i felt like i felt actually like i might die like went to the hospital and did that yeah. whole thing and yeah. The weird, the way they treated that was kind of wild. Pneumonia's, uh, there was almost nothing that they could do. I, I, I had that feeling from H1N1. I got that one too, that pandemic, the which su- I, no swine. one knows about. The yes, swine, it yeah. was the swine flu, yeah. And uh, man, that was bad. Bad, uh, bad. That was bad, bad. But it is nice, uh, look, moving forward on it, yeah. it is nice to be touring and meeting people and seeing people and feeling like we're all kind of trying to function again and like, what do, like, I, what are you going to do? When people ask me, because they say, a guy told me on set, he was like, are you afraid? I was, shoot, I'm shoot, I was shooting this this movie, and a guy said, um, are you afraid to travel and do stand-up because of what's out there? I said, look, dude, I got the vaccinated, and I had COVID. Yeah. I feel as safe as I could feel, yeah. and I don't know what yeah. else you want me to do. Right. That's how I feel about it nowadays. And we have a little whiff of PTSD. You know, the idea of getting it again is like, we don't want it. I don't want to be but near But I it. feel quite safe. And, and by yeah. the way, and when I had it, I didn't feel scared. I mean, I had 1% fatality rate. Right. No, I didn't I mean, feel scared. I felt- um, I felt just awful. <laughs> so well, you know what it felt? You know what it felt like? Similar? Yeah. Because I just had a, um, I had a, a stre- stress fracture in my back. I've had a herniated disc now for about six months. Mm. But I'm better because I'm PT and I'm yoga and- but it feels the same way I thought when I first popped my back and I first had the fracture. Mm. There is this looming thing, just like COVID, where you're like, is this forever? 
Is this mm. going to ruin? Am I not going to be able to do certain things yes. ever again? That, COVID, did, I did have those kinds of thoughts. That's what I felt Because it was like. so relentless. It yeah. was so relentless. Endless. What, what did you do to rupture your compression fracture in your spine? Mm, yeah, you, a, a, a hairline fracture. Doing what? Running. You know what it was? I would run, I would lift, and I'd run home. Mm. And I confessed this to my doctor, and I guess, you know, he was saying that, here's the deal. He's like, not everyone's body handles running the same way. Some yeah. people get improvements because of running. Their right, backs get, get stronger. Their right. legs get stronger. Their yeah. cartilage rebuilds. Mm -hmm. See, these are phenomena that happen all the time. But he was like, also, there's a lot of people that the pressure uh, is put on certain discs differently when you run. And he was like, how far are you running? And I said, five to eight miles every other day. It just depends on the day. Some days I do 10. Some days I do four. That's a lot. It is a lot. Yep. But he also said it was the lift. It was the running, then lifting, then running. And mm -hmm. now, listen, I wasn't, I'm not clean jerking 350 when I go to the gym. I was doing minimal lifting. It was just to kind of build muscle a little bit and then run home. He was like, I think you weren't giving enough rest time and stretch time in between those running sessions because the body is, he's like, what you were doing was just a little too much to handle and you were doing yeah. it all the time. All right. So he said the stress fracture, it, it, although it's healed, the herniation will be there for yeah. a it's long, long, long time. Goes. I know. But I'm not doing shots. I'm not going to do injections. You don't have to unless the pain's so overwhelming. But he said, "Don't." He was yeah. like, "Dude, you're better off not." He's I like, "Because if you get started on that, that's the re that you'll be doing it forever." That's right. Like it's I golf with a guy. He went and got. We played in a golf tournament, mm -hmm. and he's like, "Oh, my back is fucking up. I'm going to go tonight and go more shots. We'll get a more shot." Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but he, but then the next day, I will say, he's. I mean, he could do fucking cartwheels. Yeah. He feels so. It good. It works. It does work. If the pain is really bad, it's you've got to do that. But but back to the. I want to go back to the your migraines. You know, mm. we, there's a lot of data coming in about the cerebrovasculature, the, the arteries in the brain, which are they're distinct. They're different. And these things called classical monocytes are carrying bits of the spike protein that make them essentially never, they, they cause inflammation on the lining of the arteries. Right. And they, the cells never die. They, they persist. They don't have apoptosis the way they're supposed to. So it's this weird thing they're seeing in the long haulers that I think has something to do with why people are getting a lot of the brain stuff with the acute COVID. But can that be, that can be resolved? Doesn't over time start to go away or no? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like like everything. I mean, it, we don't know, right? We'll right. see if there's more dementia. Your your dream states, you know, with your your childhood memories coming back, may concern me a little Great, bit. Great, true. But, Thanks but, a lot. But, Fuck. But, this is what I wanted today. But, was you diagnosing my dementia early on? Uh, but wait, Alzheimer's is Alzheimer's is uh, forgetfulness. Dementia is confusion dementia, about de space. No, no, no. Dementia is the the syndrome of cognitive decline. Then under that, there's Pick's disease, there's Fuck. Lewy body dementia. Well, I don't want this. There's Alzheimer's dementia. Can I not have this? Dementia. I don't want any of this. There's, you know, I don't either. I, I, how, do I, how, do I, how, how do I improve brain function? I don't want, <laughs> well, do you, any languages you'd like to work on? <laughs> <laughs> or math, I guess. Or, I did and hear, running and exercising, for I sure. I did. Oh, I exercise. Diet, I diet. exercise and diet. Yep. But I did hear that somebody posted, my buddy posted the other day, the five things that a neurological uh, specialist from Harvard said you should avoid for high cognitive brain growth yeah, and yeah, function. Yeah. Um, Whiskey. <laughs> alcohol. Yeah. Sh uh, sugar. Added sugars. Yeah, yeah. Um, complex Fats. carbohydrates. Okay. Yep, I agree with all that. Uh, um, uh, uh, anything, fr literally anything fried. Literally yeah. anything. Fried fruit, French yep. fries yep. to yep. fried chicken. Yep. And... Um, what was the last? Oh, nitrates. So meats and cheeses. The nitrates, I saw that too. They, so they were they were going at deli food, and and but I love that. I shit. do too, and I'm not sure about that one. That was the one I pushed back on. So I can keep that I, one. I I'm keeping that one. Okay, good. And, and but I but I was interested that they put complex carbohydrates in because that's new. Because right, wasn't it that used to be something positive because your body would turn it into oh, energy back fuel? When, back in the day, you need your pasta to fuel you. Gotta, you we need to, some pasta. We used to have pasta parties the yeah. night before basketball tournaments. Jesus and Christ. we'd go over to somomebody's house yeah. and we'd sit in their basement and eat two pounds of pasta and yep. then watch movies and laugh and drink a gallon of Coke because you could when and you were a now kid. Now you're having childhood memories when you try to fall asleep. <laughs> and so, and so, Thanks and so, a lot. <laughs> in here, we pour whiskey. Sports, 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 sports. You like sports? I like sports, man. What do I love about sports? I like putting some cash on the game. What's the mix? I like betting. I've always liked betting on games. It's really fun. And you don't have to bet a lot of money. A lot of people are always worried about that. They say that's too rich for me, but I got to tell you, uh, I've been I've been betting on games for quite a while now with some friends. It's always fun. You know, a lot of you play fantasy. Um, and uh, it's nice to put a couple of bucks down. It feels good when you win. You got a lot riding on those odds. It's nice to stay ahead of the curve when you are betting. So before placing your bets, listen to the daily tip presented by BetMGM for the best betting analysis and informaciones. A lot can change between last night's game, today's odds. The daily tip gives you an early look at the angles. You guys know this. Odds are a-changing. Host Michael Jenkins 
and uh, Chelsea Messenger. Break down the big takeaways to make sure that you know everything you need to know to bet smarter. That's the thing. Bet smarter, not more. Don't just throw more money down. Know what you're putting your money into if you're betting on sports. Featured guests, uh, they got bookmakers. Uh, they got Odyssey insiders. They got BetMGM experts. You've always got a fresh take on the action of what's going on and where your money's supposed to be going. Your friends are going to be wondering, how do you know what they don't know? Uh, but I'm telling you, uh, now with the sports betting revolution of all the analytics available to everybody online, why not get ahead of everyone else and use use what these people are giving you to make knowledgeable bets and not throw your money up into the sky? Uh, as much fun as it is to bet on the game, which it is very, very much, it's even more fun when you've got the inside scoop and they provide the best inside scoop to sports betting that I've seen in quite a while. You're ready to bet with an edge. Tune in to the Daily Tip Presented by BetMGM. Listen, weekdays 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. Eastern on Odyssey, Spotify, or your favorite podcast app. Hey, there's nothing more I like than sleeping on comfortable sheets. And I got to tell you, Bowlin Branch has done that for me. You've heard of Bowlin Branch before, maybe on other shows, and <laughs> the hype is real. These things are so comfortable. They sent me a box, and it was unbelievable. I put them on the bed. And I told the old lady, come here and lay down on this and tell me what you think. And she fell asleep right away. It was so comfortable. Um, Ball and Branch are incredible. We spend one third of our lives in bed. So pure organic cotton sheets from Ball and Branch truly make it a special gift to get into bed. They make the highest quality sheets by doing things the right way, not the easy way. Uh, a gift everyone wants is better night's sleep. Ball and Branch never disappoints with the highest quality sheets, blankets, pillows, and throws. Plus, their holiday packaging makes your gift look and feel special. This is a great gift to give somebody. If you don't know what to get your parents, your brothers, your sisters, um, or outside people, you don't have to get it just for family members, but it is incredible. It does. It's going to improve their sleep, and they're not going to be grumpy. I'm not going to be mean to you anymore. Uh, I should, you should give this to your spouse, actually. Um, these are comfortable sheets that I am surprised by how comfortable they were. Uh, you know, and I've tried a bunch of different stuff and I really love Ball and Branch also because they make high end quality products and it's family owned. The husband and wife team, Scott and Missy Tannen, they founded this to create a new standard in betting by doing things the right way, not the easy way. And they hold themselves to a very high standard, which is, uh, across the board. You could tell they source pure organic cotton, putting workers rights first, and, uh, they do the right thing by their people, which I love. They got the signature hem sheets, their all time bestseller. Uh, these are my favorite. That's what I use. And they're beloved for so many reasons, uh, how soft they get with every single wash and uh, they're 100% organic cotton that we feel is incredible in all seasons, and it keeps you nice and cool from a twin up to a cow king, which you know, Big Papa got the twa, I got cow king. Uh, treat yourself or your loved ones and your loved ones even. Do it for yourself and them to the new standard embedding from Bull and Branch. Their gifts come wrapped and ready in their special holiday packaging. Order by 1219 for guaranteed delivery by Christmas. Get up to 20% off. That's so much. Your order from 12.3 to 12.5. That's right now, this weekend, with promo code WHISKEY. At Bull and Branch, that's Bull, B-O-L-L, and Branch.com, promo code WHISKEY. See site for details. Exclusions may apply. Ginger. I like gingers. And, and so, uh, yeah, it's it, insulin. Really, all these things are pro-inflammatory, and, and people don't really sit and think about what we mean by inflammation. What we mean by it is the lining of the arteries, the endothelial, are being exposed to oxidized products and then activate cytokines and inflammatory mediators. These are all things we now talk about, right, because right. of COVID. Uh, but it's the lining of the arteries that gets sick, and insulin is a major mediator of all that. And so it's simple sugars, starches. I, I, I try to buy those 100%. I try to keep them out of my diet completely. You don't have any sugar. I try not to. have How? And, and I, I, will, I will cheat on simple sugar more than on the starch because I'm convinced, for me, I can tell the starch does something to me. I, I just I, had potatoes with sugar on top for potatoes breakfast. Potatoes is not the, so much the problem. Bread. Bread, cake, that kind of thing. Cookies. Never going to stop. I got to tell you, I'm never going to stop. Yeah, you're Irish. My, my, my balance <laughs> is if I can keep working out and stay physically as healthy as I try to be yeah. as I get older, I'm going to keep the others. My, okay, look, that's my fine. grandmother's 91. Yeah. And we just took her to lunch. Yeah. And I got to tell you something. You're a prideful goat. Yeah, that is, that is, <laughs> I am a prideful goat. I, I know you want to try some. Look, you're Of course around. I do. I, I, I actually had it more, I, I, whiskey destroys me. Why? Uh, it just, I just get wasted by it. I just do it. Oh, I, and, it quickly and, gets And then drunk. I get reflux and then I can't sleep at night and I just, I, but I like it. I like it. I, I enjoy it. When you it. get drunk, you can't make it through the night. You keep waking up. Yes. Yeah. I hate it. It's bad. And I get, I just like startling away. It's called sleep latency is all off. And wine does not do that to me. Bourbon always does that to me. Really? Isn't that weird? Yeah. See, for me, it's when I just, if I'm, if I'm out having a big night of drinking, I'll stay up all night. I mean, really, I, like I'll I'll fall asleep and then I'll have to wake up. Like I don't get drunk and pass out like people yeah, do. Yeah. 
I'll get liquored up and then be at home and then fall asleep and yeah. then wake up at 4 a.m. Yeah, pee and then wake up at 6 a.m. Yes, I get that. I don't but like wine, that. see, wine does it from wine does it to me the I, same. I, I, if I had a lot, I suppose that would happen. But, but I, I my days are too full. <laughs> I, don't, sure. I don't. When I sleep, is screwed up. I, it screws everything up for the whole day. You don't put. So do you plan a night when you're like, we can get toasted tonight because tomorrow? Yeah, I, I kind of did that for Thanksgiving, and and I and we had all this nice stuff. We had very interesting things. There's, there's something called uh, I should have brought. It. I'll bring it next time. Lost mm-hmm. Republic. You will love this. Wait, how do I? Why do it's I? A, it's sounds a, familiar. It's a whiskey. It's a, Lost it's, Republic. It's really good. It's good, huh? Really good. Did you and, have people at your house for yes, Thanksgiving? Yes, we had twenty people. Yeah. You want to come next year? Come twenty on. people. We, I, we Did discovered, you check vax cards? We 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 asked that everybody vaccinated, but sure. we didn't check anything. Uh, and nobody. It, last year, I came away with COVID. Not this year. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was going to say, so, isn't this a little reminiscent of the past? Yeah, it is. But I, I want to go back to your Irish uh, heritage. Give it to I, me. Is it, is it Scotch Irish or Irish? Or do you know? Irish, Irish, Irish. So it didn't go sort of northern. So, nah. Okay. So there's this great book called Albion Seed about how what regions of Britain settled this country. Mm. And it's very interesting. I have to write it down right now. now. It's it's a very boring read. You might want to read the Sharks Notes or something. What do they call them now? Cliff Notes. Albion Seed. Albion. A L B I O N. Albion is the old ancient name for Britain. Huh. It's Albion Seed, meaning the offspring of Albion. Sure. And you know the Puritans came from a certain area in Eastern Europe and the Eastern England and mm-hmm. the uh, and the the the. Uh, Quakers came from another thing, and the people that said it, Baltimore came from another thing. These were like different country, different cultures and countries within England, right? right. And they came here. And when people, I, I, I guess I was, I was thinking about this because people were talking about it during Thanksgiving. They're like, "Oh, these people that these people at that time were lots of different people." Right. There wasn't a one kind. This of... was just the Puritan thing at Plymouth. That was one little settlement, and whatever they did, I don't really know. But it was, it was not cool. I get it. But they had the Quakers in Philadelphia. The they were. Establishing a utopia, they had Lord Baltimore set up in Maryland. They had what's his name thing and William what's his name in Art of Rhode Island mm-hmm. setting stuff up. But the interesting group were these Scotch Irish and the Irish that came in through the Carolinas. What did we that's do? That's the interesting group. What did we do? <laughs> that, that to me, that's the part that got me. They were like and they fought in the war big time. Oh, they and did. Andrew Jackson was one of these people. Uh, he was a Scotch Irish. Absolutely, so, good man. Yeah, came in through the Carolinas. His mom, his mom was a nurse tended to revolutionary soldiers in the docks that they, they had boats filled with injured soldiers or something. Uh, any event, uh, they essentially, you, you watched, uh, um, COVID, uh, the, the HBO show with the dragon queen, uh, oh, Game of Thrones. <laughs> Game of, you watch Game of Thrones. That's COVID. Uh, you watch Game of Thrones. Lord of the Thrones. Lord, Lord of the King uh, run Thrones. Okay, okay. Game, Game of, of Thrones. Game of Lords. You watch Game of Thrones. No, you did not watch it. Never saw it. Well, I was afraid of that. So, so there was a. But people a, tell me about it. All right, the there time. was a group in there that were called the Wildlings, mm-hmm. and they were these people that were just completely uh, out in the out in the wilderness, and they were they were br- brutes. They were you know they were maniacs, and they if they wanted to marry somebody, they hit him over the head and drag her by the hair and steal. That's how I met my wife. Right. Uh, that is a actually what was going on in Northern England and Scotland. Really? They, that's a good representation of who was hanging out. <laughs> and and mind you, because the British went up there multiple times with genocidal assaults, they were the ones that were left were serious survivors, like right. serious. These guys are hardcore. Hardcore. That's who settled the Carolinas in the South. That's amazing. Yeah. And the really crazy ones amongst them thought they'd throw their family in a wagon and take them west. They were the super crazy amongst the crazy. Sure. And uh, thus we have what we have out here. Well, thank God it's, for the crazy people. Yeah, that's right. They settled everything. That's it's why people like so California. So blame them for taking over the native <laughs> lands. It really, it's your people that took over indigenous people's it. property. Wait, but so. did we take it over or did we just go out there and say, hey, we're, we're going to be here as well? I wonder how that all worked. It, it, What's the documentation on how much people really? Did you ever went read west? Little House on the Prairie? <laughs> yes. Did you? Yeah. It, it. She. One of her books. She gets into that. She talks about how there was a, there was a, a native uh, or indigenous peoples group nearby, and they were had some sort of all night event where they were were, were told by tipped off by somebody that this was a war sort of. Uh, Ritual, and they were going to come slaughter all the settlers wow. because they were encroaching on their lands and on their ability to game and you know. And hunt. I wonder how much and, of that was not. And, but but imagine that happens once, uh, and now it's on. 
Right. You know what I mean? That's it. And and not that they didn't have a grievance. They did. But if it gets violent for whatever reason, now it's on. Now that's that's how people, that, that's how wars start. But can you imagine if you could just show them a map of how big the land was? You'd be like, there's so much more that we could also have. I think that- And who, and who knows what the settlers were doing? You know what Well, I the mean? discrepancy was always about port, port cities were tough because they everybody wanted access to water, right? They wanted yep. access to be able to get in and out. Yep. So outside of that, I do think, that's why I used to joke years ago, I had a joke about when I lived in Arizona, I said I couldn't believe to meet white people who were generationally Arizona, not natives. If you might, if I, if I have native friends from Arizona, it makes sense, right? Their yeah. ancestors were, were living there Navajo, for a yeah, long, Pueblo, long, long yeah, time. Yeah. But when I met white people from Arizona, I was always like, man, your ancestors just gave up. They were headed west to California they here. and they stopped. <laughs> you have weak ancestors. They just didn't keep fucking going. They were going for water and gold. That was the whole goal. And they stopped in Arizona and was like, this will do. 104, I guess we'll do. I couldn't find, I, I always used to shit on white people who have generationally lived in Arizona for five generations. Like, you realize they just were weak. They never, they couldn't keep going. Have you spent time in Phoenix or Tucson though? Oh, I went to school out there. Okay, I, four okay. years. Right, it's kind four, of beautiful. It just gets a lot of no, summer. I love it. <laughs> Yeah. But also, I just think historically it never made sense that these white people who were trying to settle the West stopped there. Because there's no resources, by the way. There's no resources out there. Yeah. You can what, barely what grow they food. do for water? I mean, well, they had a lot of it was started up north. The Flagstaff does get a lot of water. They get snow. So okay. northern Arizona does. Okay. But down in the valley in Phoenix, I don't know. So they just sort of slowly probably moved down. Yeah, there. moved down. Yeah, well, yeah. because there was, there. I mean, also because of the migrant. I mean, first of all, it was Mexico at one point. Right. Or, you know. That's another part so of this. So there, there was a cultural clashing yep. that was happening, taking over, you know. So I, I do think it is interesting to find people that were from there, but I always make fun of them because I'm like, you, you couldn't keep going? Well, they're, they're, we're so they're, close. They're, we, we really don't appreciate the complexity of the settling of this country. Bo it's both, wild. Both in terms of the stuff I'm talking about with the genetic heritages and the cultures that come in. Mm -hmm. But then once we did after that, it's very complicated. And where we went and why we went there. See, me, <laughs> my, my, my mom's parents and my dad's parents both came from, from Sicily and from Ireland, and they both went to Chicago. Right. That, it was a beep boop. That's hey, it. My family went, went, went from Ukraine to Toronto, to Hartford, to Chicago. See, that's at least a little bit of a, mine were just like, that's where we go, we have to be there, yeah. and we have to Chicago get Chicago, America. Chicago, America, <laughs> that's it, it <laughs> was. Yeah. I, and, I don't, and I'm like, you know, how many generations didn't There was the opportunity leave. in Chicago, America, though. You could have a small business in Chicago. Did they have small business? Well, my grandfather, well, my, my grandfather was a, fire, was a fireman, mm. and, his, and his father was, um, yeah, he did something with there his hands. There must have been a big Irish settlement. He was a, la they, he was a laborer, it's yeah. an Irish settlement. They, they went where their ethnic groups were. Right. So my parents- he, Labor, know, labor, yeah. and then firemen, and now they're all, you know, they're all firefighters or something. You know, I have a theory. Cops. I, I, Chicago's there to be- yeah, I, First time I went to Chicago, I was like, why is this big city here? What's it doing here? <laughs> why is it set up? And I thought, oh, it's the railroads. The railroads came through here, and the meat, and the railroads, and then, and sure. then, the, and then the lakes. You could move stuff out there. It's, it's transportation. Yeah. I have a theory- that the reason the railroads ended up there, they were supposed to go through St. Louis. Right. That was the gateway to the West. Sure. All the wagons went through St. Louis. They the have... railroad was going to go through St. Louis. I have a theory. It didn't go through. There's a mystery why that happened. Why all of a sudden it's going up north like that. The other big mystery was why the Missouri Compromise was just vanished one day into the Kansas-Nebraska Act. It just, boom, all of a sudden, the Missouri Compromise doesn't exist. My theory is Stephen Douglas, the guy in the Lincoln-Douglas debates, uh -huh. made a deal to, to get behind the Kansas-Nebraska Act if they moved the railroad up to Chicago. Was it because Lincoln was an Illinois guy? It's, it's, Stephen Douglas was a senator from, from Illinois. Uh, this was before the Lincoln Douglas debate. Oh, okay, okay, and, okay. And this, I just think he made a deal because that's what mobilized Lincoln to get back into politics. The fact that the Missouri Compromise went away one day, he was like, no one ever thought about that. Why did this suddenly? Where did this Kansas Nebraska Act come from? Wow. All of a sudden, we all agree we're going to let this thing go to extinction, and now all of a sudden it can go west, and the railroad ends up in Chicago and not St. Louis anymore. Huh, that's interesting. Yeah. That's my theory. Someone's well, getting paid. Right. Follow the money. <laughs> Follow, Follow the, the money. fucking money. Some, that's what it always is, is someone's getting paid no matter what. And we usually- even, even when it doesn't have anything to do with it, you can still figure out something by following the money. Well, isn't you know that, what I mean? Isn't that everything we learned today? And then we look back and you go, well, it's so funny. By the time you find out about it, it's usually way too late. Like you're thinking about that now. 
Right. You're way too late. Right. Back then, right. they were like, right. I guess this is just what's happening. Right. And you know why I th- started, started thinking about that? Is because I, I got to be pretty familiar with the Lincoln-Douglas debates. I really got into them. Dug I, in. I, I dug into them. And I saw what a, a just a mover Steve, Stephen Douglas was. He didn't give a shit about it. He had no moral anything. He was just like, whatever works for people, that's what we're going to do. Right. Whatever makes things, oh, you know, that was his whole uh, thing about- uh, the territories determining whether or not they be slave slavery or not. He's just like whatever they want. That's <laughs> it's all right. Whatever. It's like, dude, you don't care about anything. Dude. He's letting people pick. Yeah, his thing. What what did he call it? Oh shit! Is it? It's a phrase like COVID again, like manifest destiny. This I just don't think I'm not remembering. It's uh, where where the population determines the destiny of the state, no matter what, no matter what they want, they can have it. That's it's, like those. Um, that's like the state uh, state phrases when you see like "live free or die." Or, yeah, you know whatever. With that sh- was a little different because at least right. that was just we're going to protect what we have. This was, hey man, we're going to do whatever we want. <laughs> it's like really, any, uh, whatever you want. Yeah, I would love to see it though back then, just to see how that functions. Well, I would love to have seen how people operated back then when well, everyone's doing kind of whatever the fuck. Well, they Kansas want. broke down, right? There's something called bloody Kansas. I don't know what that is. It it broke into violence. Because they couldn't, they couldn't, they got so heated up about this. Because they couldn't control everybody? They, they couldn't have a rational discourse about it, and people wanted to do what they wanted to do, man. And so anybody, how did they, what did they do? There was there was just a big war? Like a uh, civil, like a, a local civil war? There was war? something called the Wilmot Proviso, uh, and th- that set it all off. I forget the details. Yeah. That, but that was, the, that was kind of the beginning of the stoppage of all that chaos. Yeah. Uh, Let's see what. Why did things? No, the stoppage was the Civil War. Really? Oh, oh it, it really. Okay, that's because okay. there's stuff was sort of emerging here and there, Brewing. and then all of a sudden, boom, we, they focused nationally. Yeah. See, I, I'm, I get so, like we. My sister went. We were in Boston, and my sister went to go to Salem, and I didn't know. I didn't like know much about Salem, you know. And I looked it all up, and I, and during the witch hunts, uh, you know, two that it was two men. You know, two men got got hung in in the town square and all it was like well it was john proctor right i mean that was the thing about that's the 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 arthur miller play the crucible was about this yeah but he really was writing about the mccarthy trials but it it was a metaphor for the uh, mccarthy trial but i but i was thinking when i thought two these two dudes can you imagine they're hunting down these women these witches and to be one of the two dudes thrown in there well that's fucking that's the thing about that was what i was worried about we are all over the place, man. Yeah. We, is that good? Yeah. Okay. So it, without the booze too, it's amazing. Uh-huh. So <laughs> I've been drinking. You just don't know. When, uh, okay, good. When when this present moment developed, I, I I the thing I was concerned about was the guillotines, the cancel culture. This is this is the modern yeah. equivalent of the guillotine, and the thing you learn if you look at your history is that when the guillotines are out, eventually. Everybody goes on the guillotine. Yeah, right. It's not limited to the first. It's the transgressors, then it's the people that aren't pure enough. Right, and then it's the people that put the not pure enough on because everyone's pissed. So eventually, all go, it, it comes for you. We all get fried. It comes for you, and that's what Bill Maher has been saying. He's been saying that. Right, a- and I thought that was a pretty astute thing for him to say because that's the way history. It's the way human history works. Just the way it works. Right. If you think that, you, it, and it's the way religion works too. We just look at your history. It's just there. It's always been there, and we just haven't done it in this country except in Salem's when we did it. That's when we did it. Yeah. Bad. It yeah, was real bad. 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 And the more well, I read we did, about though, it, to be fair, we did it with the McCarthy thing. It was just the other side of the aisle doing it, right? But hunting, but hunting for people, uh, hunting people to assume that they're this other species is wild to me. They were able to convince everybody that they might be this other. That's hysteria. That's wild. Right. And we and are they bought in... it. Educated people were into it. We are going to look back at this last year and have similar kind of thoughts. That we were off our rocker. It can, they were so hysterical. It was a histri- histrionic disorder. I, I really, I, I watched us turn to narcissism. I wrote a book about it. I watched it happen. I was in a hospital, working in a hospital when I saw the narcissistic disorders coming in. It's been a histrionic turn now. I don't know what triggered it. I don't know why we, why we would go to histri- histrionic disorder, mm. but that's it. And I first saw, thought of it, well, I first sort of saw it when I heard crazy thinking which is part of histrionic, you get delusional really easily. And so about a year ago, I started hearing people saying, I'm going to go out and kill Nazis. There's Nazis over here and there's Nazis over here. And there's a Russian operative in the White House and Nazis and Nazis. And if you had done that two years before, talked about seeing Nazis everywhere, I would put you in the hospital. (laughs) 
for a thought disorder. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. hundred percent. Nazis everywhere. And and I thought, oh my God, this is just part this is just in the the thinking of the culture right now that people are delusional. And so the, that kind of thing is not going to age well. It's not no, gonna that's going to be scary. Yeah. I think the other side of it is the precautionary parts of the of uh, our the, the safety Uber Alice. Yeah. Safety, 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 safety. Safety so you can't live. Yeah, that's I, wild. I, I, that's bad. You need to live, everybody. Go live. Live. It, it, living is not always safe. But it, living, but living, living. In I feel like people just need to live intelligently and like yes. make sure. Rational you're, revolution. Christina P and I had the rational revolution. You yeah, got, just do rational revolution. Everybody. Do your best to do the right thing so that everything can operate as so instead of yeah. chaos and yeah. pulling away from society and stoppage of everything. And then you're like, well, we all need to learn how to function and do this together. And if we all kind of work on a similar line, then we all kind of start to get back to whatever fucking normal is. I mean, you know, I, well, well I'm, I'm also Hegelian in the sense that the thesis, antithesis, synthesis, that idea, I believe something, some good things will come out of this. Oh, no, I think a lot of good things I, yeah, are coming I out do. of it. Yeah. Right. And, and it's just, we got to get back to the, the synthesis. We got to get back to the sure. middle of it. That is really true. There are, there are good things that are going to come out of this. The one thing I don't want to see out of this is TV shows and films all about this. I don't want to see more shit <laughs> like, about, what about I don't want movies something? about COVID because you know You'll that's on the docket. You'll be in them. I'll yeah, watch them. I'll take them. I'll, I'll watch them. And by the way, if you're directing or anybody's looking for to cast those, I will be in any of those things. No, <sighs> I just think I don't need. I want to I want to be in some stuff like that where I play counter uh, Oh, the, co the counter type. The counter type, yeah. yeah. like I'm a drug addict or something or a cop <laughs> or something crazy that I'm not. You're, go you're a detective that's gone off his, <laughs> right. gone off on his. Got off my meds. I'm psychotic now. Drew's lost <laughs> it. <laughs> We can't get a hold of him. I'd love to do that. He shut down. He shut down all communication I, with I've everybody. I've said that anybody else that knows, you know, yeah, wants Andrew to take me to. But oh, oh by the way, uh, I was going to ask you when I said to you last time, I asked you a question um, when I had COVID, and I said, "Is uh, is masturbation okay?" While I was really sick, because I was like, obviously, I can't have sex, but is masturbation okay? And you gave me the go ahead. Yeah. Because I was a scared. I was a scared for some reason. No, I don't no, know why I was scared. It's good. Go you can blow out hammers in your head, but, but let me. Right. Can you? No. <laughs> <laughs> but let me but let me tell you something. This is wild. It helped. After COVID, uh, like my sex drive went up it, through the roof. I had a little bit of that too. Through the roof, yeah. it was crazy. I mean, it leveled yeah. at some point, but it was kind of crazy. I, I kind of thought it was me just celebrating feeling better, and being I, alive. I, yeah, like I'm back to normal. Yeah, I'm telling you something. A celebrating life is something people need to get back to. Sure. And that, that's, that's what I saw in New Orleans with the Dave Chappelle show. Yeah. That's what I see occasionally in people in restaurants and places where I go and people are like so happy to be together. And you need other people to, to live. That's, that's where life is lived. Well, you can feel the vibrations of being out around other people who are enjoying stuff yeah. is, is it's, it's unbeatable. A, yeah, it's really- We went to the Eagles game when I was in Philly. Oh. So fun, man. Oh. It's just so fun to be around all these people because the energy, it's just so fun to, it, the, I think the best part about sports, I know a lot of people that don't like sports, and we get in arguments all the time. Really? And, yeah, well, there's guys I th I think in in the art world, oh, you know, in the art, in the world of comedy ah, or art and ar it. art artists are usually like sports are fucking yeah. barbaric and yeah. archaic and, yeah, yeah. but I think a lot of people that I get in arguments about my 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 sole reason for went trying to win them over is imagine talking that you don't know these people. We sat next to these this couple. Yeah. And engaging with strangers yes. who you have one thing in common, right? We may not, we may disagree on everything, politics and, mm -hmm. and religion and all sorts of shit, but we like this thing together. And so immediately you're friends. It's almost- Thank God you weren't sitting next to a Baltimore fan. <laughs> no, no, <it's> true. <laughs> no, but it was weird. It was so in sync that you're like, yeah. we don't know each other, but yes. we'd be, we bought this guy- But a... that's what nationalism used to be too, by the way, right. or, or even pride in your civic, you know, in the, our community and stuff. Right. You need, we I, should I think have those that. things. It makes yes. you, these guy had primo, pr, 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 primo subs, Philly people will know, primo subs are really great big Italian hoagies and uh, hoagies. <laughs> and this guy had four of them. They had snuck them in his uh, son's jacket. Perfect. And so we had a couple of beers and we were like, oh man, those look, that's awesome. Good move, you know, better than getting the shit food that was at the, and then he gave us a sub and he gave us one. We broke it in half. We shared with our neighbor and then I bought everyone beers. And then it becomes this like community, chummy community. community yeah. And it should, that's the reason why when someone disagrees and doesn't like sports, I'm always like, you're missing it. It's more about this thing than it is about yeah. that thing happening. I, I agree with you. By far I, to I, me. I agree. I and, love the game. But... And by the way, there's something uncanny about being with 60 or 80,000 people in a collective experience. Wild. You know, that where your emotions are going together up and down. Right. 
That's amazing. Where else do you get that? You know, you no. don't, what, where else is that feeling? Maybe it's a rock kind of, concert, but even maybe. that scene doesn't seem, that to me, I don't like that as much. Well, because you're- It doesn't feel as- <laughs> Well, because I'm the whole time I'm thinking like, how are we going to get out of here? Yeah. <laughs> Fucking the parking's going to be a nightmare. Is there a train? Can we take a train to leave? <laughs> so I, I talked to someone about that that said, we should go to more, a friend was like, we should go to more concerts or live shows. My biggest beef about concerts is it's so many people. And for some reason- I think comedy has become more the the, the place to the do place that. to go. Yeah, yeah. It, it, to me, it, I mean, more people should go see comedy. That's what I'm trying no, to say. No, I I mean that. Yeah, because I I'm seeing more sort of meaningful communal experience there than yeah. at a rock concert. Get people. And more by the way, engaged. here seeing a 75 year old play of you know guitar licks. It's like, <laughs> why is that a new thing? That's good. The, the the revolution of people of old rock stars that are touring again. I wanted to that's, see that's you. their last chance. <laughs> yeah, but I wanted to see. I I missed you before when you were young. Yeah. I kind of. I, 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 by the way, I'm going to say something controversial now, uh which I'm sure I've said before, but I generally have, uh, I wouldn't say disdain, but I have a little bit of like a question mark over my head when it pertains to the sort of the idolatry of rock stars. I mean, these were guys that learned how to play an electric guitar (laughs) so they could meet chicks. Right. At a time when playing the electric guitar and the drums was the thing to do. Yeah. And then they behaved like many, like really horrible animals, they, and they did horrible things. Have not copped to any of it, right? Uh, and now we're supposed to call them geniuses. And I mean, poor, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I still like Led Zeppelin, and I, and I like the Beatles, and I like things like that. But but I don't, I, I don't. I, they shouldn't be idols. They shouldn't. They're not. But geniuses. they are idolized. Yeah, and that's the mistake. That was a mistake. Yeah. And and to see comedy kind of moving into that zone right now, I, I'm liking that. I I think that's a good thing. Oh, you do? Yeah. You like so? What, but you're not can, being idolized, but you're allowing you're allowing to be the rock star a little bit in a big room, and I and I think that's a good thing. Well, because there are. I mean, Dave is kind of a rock star of comedy. He he's become. Yeah, I think Dane Cook was like the first kind of like yeah. rock star because right. he stadiumed himself. The stadium he, guys. And, yeah, he, uh, he became Mattis that Galco thing. did that. And, Sebastian's that yeah. now. I mean, yeah. the, Burr is that now. I mean, yeah. those guys are all kind of becoming the rock stars of comedy. The only worry I have when people get that big in comedy is um, staying kind of somewhat in touch with people. I mean, the comedian's job partially is to just kind of be the everyman, so to speak. Correct. Uh, the guys, you know, I, the ones that were in New Orleans with me, so it was Jeff Ross, Joe Rogan, Tom Segura, Dave Chappelle. They're fine. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. They're they're in touch. No, but it but it is hard to keep that. I think it's hard to keep that. I think part, part of the I reason Dave- on the guy. I think part of the reason Dave went to that farm in Ohio is because he wanted to keep that thing. Mm. That's my opinion. I may, I may be completely wrong, but- mm. I do think the bigger you get, it is very hard. Look, I just shot a movie with Kevin Hart, and Kevin's amazing. I I don't really know him, but he's he's a he is a a space cadet, not in the loopy sense. He doesn't know. He's just he's up there. He's way way up there. He's way out and above, and it's almost like that's got to be weird to become that. I guess. Yeah, it's not even his fault. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's kind of like you're talented enough where people want to raise you as well, high as they the can. Other, here's the here's the real risk where that becomes a problem is if you've never had a day job. Like, right. right, like a day professional. He, he's gone through that. He yeah. started from the bottom. So as a, as a comic, yeah, but I mean, as an actor too. I mean, he was like a bit part actor and a comedian. So he started really I mean, low. I mean, a day job where that you think that's what you're going to do your whole life. Well, he, I think he I, probably did that. That'd too. be good. Well, he's actually seemed pretty even to me. I'm surprised to hear you say that about him. So I'm not well, surprised. He had I mean, a day he's job. Even, he's even in the fact where he's still grounded. Yeah. I just think there there will always be a piece that is uncontrollable. I where see. He's so big. He's just... In he's not... Dis- he, can't, he can't go jump on a Southwest flight to Vegas. Right, Do you know right, what I mean? Right, That's right. what I mean. I mean, you're kind of removed from... And boo-hoo, it's champagne problems. I know people at home are like, who the fuck cares? I'm just saying, there is a piece of getting fame or larger in our business that... You do lose things that you kind of still want. It will I, disconnect you. Yeah, yeah you can't. don't have you don't have a but choice. You could fight to keep it back. I mean, you could. You fight. can try. I I I've learned I learned yesterday some friends of mine that are that are celebrity types about. I this. don't have these problems. By I don't the way. either. It's kind of nice. Yeah. But but at the uh, there's a th- that turns out there's this thing you can go to at LAX which is like a suite concierge. Yeah. I know what you're and talking about. And they drive about. you to- Yeah, they drive you to the terminal. Holy shit. They drive you to the plane. Yeah, to the plane. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. like, what? Yeah, and then you what board is, from the tarmac. What is parallel universe? Have you done it? No, 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 no. But I, but I know people that do it. Wow. Yeah. In fact, when- what, I mean, That is- When Rogan a, and I were touring, he still did- We still walked through the terminal and went on- I'm sure. I mean, now I think he does. He privates maybe, but, but just because he can afford it. I mean, I bet he would have no problem walking through the terminal. No, he liked it. We used to- yeah. He had no problem back yeah. in the day. But yeah. also- 
Um, I got to get on his podcast. I told him I would smoke weed with him on his podcast. You should. Mm. When was the last time you smoked weed? Uh, I, I, weed does not affect me. It just doesn't. I don't like it. It doesn't affect me. At but all. I, last time was with him and in, in, with him, actually. Uh, you rip an edible, you'll, you'll feel it. Probably. And I, I, I find it all not pleasant. Re- like and yeah. anxiety inducing? Just not, doesn't feel good. That's really? all the best I can describe. You don't get it. good tingles upstairs no, in the head. No, I don't. I don't. I, I, but I'll, I, I'll try. I mean, I, I, I as right. long as it's legal. I mean, well, I don't. I, I'm not endorsing it. I, you know, I'm nor am I endorsing alcohol for for Bobby. You know, I mean, I no, not for him. You know what I'm saying? I mean, there yeah. are people that have problems with these things, and I and and by the way. I've seen lots of trouble, even from cannabis moderate use in adolescence. I've seen a lot of shitty things happen. Well, I've said it's that. legal, I, whatever. Underage you know. is tough. Mm-hmm. I, I do think, in retrospect, I we are going to look back about my generation. I mean, I, we were all big pot users, and we were all 14, 15, 16. I think if they can control it and let you have it later in your teens or in your early twenties, yeah. it's a lot easier on. I, I on the brain. It really, there, we do know that the frontal lobes are important in terms of us. Creating action, yeah, and I think weed gets in the way of that. Sure, if, if you, when you're when you're young, yeah, when it's not developed. Yeah, no, it just, I, it just, I agree. You're, you're not able to do the things you should be doing with the same enthusiasm that is normal in youth, and that's a problem. Well, do you have a, do you have like a thing that gets your creative juices going? What? Get, oh, what I, you... I don't mean something I consume. Yeah, nothing, huh? Yeah, like exercise stuff like that. Exercise I, I, gets you more my, creative. I'm, a, I'm yeah, it does. Yeah, that's funny. It does the opposite for me. Yeah. See, when I'm, I'm done exercising, I just, I disappear. See, it's like meditative for me. I, I, I that my, my best thinking is either in the shower or when I'm working out. Those are my two. Really? Yeah. You're firing a lot in the shower. I, in the morning in the shower, it's uncanny how much stuff I think about and what comes to me. That's funny yeah. because I used to, when I would take long showers before I would do shows when I was on tour, I always wished there was something I could write on in the shower yeah, on too. the wall. Yeah, Yeah. We should make something, yeah. well, Drew. It's a tape recorder even, just something we can just Well, because I, I, because I used to think that like, I would just, uh, I'd wait until I got out and I'd speak it into my phone. But I thought, how fun would it be to have something that could capture digitally what you wrote on the wall of the shower and yeah. transfer it to your phone? Yeah. We need to make this. Prideful goat pad. Pr- prideful goat pad. <laughs> They're going to sue us, by the way. They're like, you can't do that to our thing. No, but, I, oh, but I'm goodness. curious to know because you've got, you're, you, feel, you endlessly fire, right? You, you, you're really active. You're constantly doing something. I, I try, yeah. So what, I like it. I then, like But that. what is it that keeps that going then? Youth exercise is the one thing that oh, does it? it keeps it going? That's a different question, right? What, what am I... Because I because I'm a thinker. I think and read and think and read and think and read. And so that's different than doing a lot of things. Doing a lot of things is where I feel like I'm actually... There's a guy named... Uh, an old psychologist named James Masterson. And he, used to, he was one of the original what are called self-psychologists. And he had this theory that creativity, I, I personally believe that service is really one of the main things to a good life and, and happiness. But he had, his thing was that creativity was that element that we all need. Mm. And, and I don't disagree with him. And for me, doing things is that creative endeavor. I have to be active doing stuff. Right. Uh, and I just love it. I just love doing stuff. I don't know. I feel very, I'm so grateful, so grateful. I, I had a little... I, I don't know. I think I've been a little depressed lately or something because I was noticing that in things. I actually think my wife made goose. And on Friday morning, I was really depressed all of a sudden. I thought, maybe the goose makes me depressed. <laughs> I'm going to eat some more, see if I get depressed again. I'm going to do that experiment. Goose depression. But I but I love it. But but it. so the next morning I was like, well, I, I should be so grateful. I have so much to be grateful for. What is the matter with me? And it has something to do with not, do, I have to be doing stuff. I have to be Active, engaged. That, yeah. that engaging, yeah. And, 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 some of you know when I was practicing medicine full time, I, I did fourteen hour days very routinely. No thanks. Very routinely, and, and not anymore. I, I don't think I could even do it, let alone want to do it. Uh, but everything else has felt easy and inadequate. <laughs> like like I'm inadequate. Like I should need to be doing more. So you feel so like you're trying to make up for your. your I just lack feel of... a little inadequate all the time, and I, then inadequacy probably is something that's in. I'm sure it was something that's already in my psychology. Yeah. I always felt a little inadequate. Like it's for, part of your DNA. It's part of my thing. So low self-esteem, inadequacy were sort of already in the background. Love that. Always. Yeah. I, I think low self-esteem is not a bad thing because it makes you makes you always feel like you're responsible for whatever happens. Right. Like if something goes wrong, it's like, well, something I did, I guess. I guess I but, fucked it But up. inadequacy is, I, I haven't felt inadequate in a long time. I haven't been aware of it and I've sort of been aware of it lately. And that's a that's a more unpleasant feeling. Yeah. Yeah. And if, I mean, it sounds sad. I get more anxiety and depression than anything else, but my anxiety comes from workload. I put so much on my so plate. So you go the other way. See, I get high when I have lots, when, I, when, I'm, when I'm overdone. I put on my plate and I'm like, how am I going to fucking figure all this shit out? It's yeah. almost like a puzzle I so put I like on myself. That. I get high from that. Oh, fuck that. That's workaholic. You like dumping out the thousand piece puzzle and you're yeah. like, let's go. No, no, it's not that so much as 
we got to get from here to there <laughs> and, and, and good luck. See, and, and we got to do that it. That gives me yeah. pr- so much anxiety, but yeah. I take it on. Yeah. It's almost like I purposely keep loading up the plate over and over and it over It certainly again. makes things easier that are, are not as overwhelming. Right. You know what I mean? I do have trouble initiating things and getting stuff done. Yeah, 100%. My okay, procrastination see, is through right. the roof. See, I have, I have the opposite. I have wow. the opposite. I, I have to, if, so, if something comes on my plate, I have to do it now. Like when you were in school, you never procrastinated at all? A little bit back in, 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 when you say it, uh, I, I now no. So once I was in graduate training and stuff, absolutely the opposite. Just had to get done immediately, immediately, immediately. Wow. But when I was in school, I used to procrastinate on writing assignments. I hated writing, so I'd, I'd have trouble. I'd stare See, at a page for long periods. I time loved writing, but I still waited. <laughs> I loved it. I, I couldn't wait. The night before, oh, that was like where the best shit was going to come out because I was annoyed. I was agitated. My brain was just on fire. I was overthinking everything. So then I could put out more shit on the paper. Just, Writers rule the world. I've decided that. They do. Yeah, they do. They kind set, of. They set everything up. Wait, I, I wanted to ask this real fast. When you were doing 14-hour shifts, because yeah. I just did this thing with Dr. Ken. You know Ken Jong, don't you? I know him well. He, and, I used to have him sit in for me on Loveline before anybody knew him. Really? Yes. Was he good? Excellent. Yeah, he was really good. Very smart, good doctor. Yeah, he's very smart. Very sensitive. Good. He's an internist like me at the same training. He said to me, we talked about um, pulling late shifts, you know, like these long, long, yeah. endless shifts. Yeah. And he was like, oh, doctors are all trying to do something to stay awake and- some people get juiced on exercise. Mm-hmm. Some people drink caffeine, like an insane amount of caffeine. Yeah. And I said, you know, what about you? And he said, I would have a case of Diet Cokes. Oh, yeah. And I was like, that's fucking terrible. And a doctor consuming a case of Diet Coke. What's it, and I, what's it doing to you? No big deal. That's, well, by that the way, shit's got to be bad. Nah. Really? But, but well, a case, not good probably. Yeah, there could be something going but on. What, there, but what? Drinking a Diet Coke every day is not bad for you? No, we, if we live in a litigious society, if, was, if was there any evidence at all that was bad for us, you don't think somebody so Sue Coke? If there was any evidence sure. of any sort? I get, well, so how, okay. Always measure it with that, with that yardstick. But, but, but regular Coke, yeah, because it gives the amount of yeah, diabetes sugar. and sugar. sugar. And teeth. But the aspartame or whatever it's called that's in there, so, we again, don't know. We don't not, know. not one lawsuit on aspartame. Not one. Yet. How long has it been around? 20 years? I, that's not long enough, Come is on. it? Oh, for us to know? For lawyers? They'll, they'll <laughs> sue for anything. They'll sue for anything. But, but to, to his point, though, physicians, we don't, we don't look after our health. In fact, we, we have a, a pride in sacrificing our health for our patients. That's why you see fat doctors. Fat doctors, doctors that don't sleep. Sleep is more important than we understood. Uh, and my, my thing was you don't sleep. You sacrifice for your patient. You don't go home. You don't, you don't, you know, no matter sure. how much you say. And you don't, you also don't stay home if you're sick. You work, you get your shit done, which was weird. So Think about weird. that. Yeah. You put health aside for the health of other people. Oh, yeah. That you were, they were, you were that... pounded that. And, that. and that's what made us think we were doing something so important. I thought what I was doing was so, so, so important. And now it's just sort of like, eh. But is that altruistic or is that a little self-indulgent? It, it's a little culty is what it is. Because you're not really it's, doing it for the for, to say, like, I'm really doing this because I no, care you, so you, much. No, you you are. But you also like the- The, the high and the, and, the, and the status. Yeah, because and, we- But we, it's a little, it's more, you don't, because everyone was required to do it, it had a little culty quality to it. Well, right. Like, look, the leader said, do it, you did it. And that was it. This happens a lot in entertainment yeah. all the time, right? The mm-hmm. people at the bottom of the of the rung of entertainment, right? Production assistants or y- people that are at the bottom that are working remarkably hard. There is a cult mentality over yep. how painful the work is. Yep. They love it. Yep. In fact, they love to tell you. Yep. When an actor or somebody bitches about, oh my God, dude, we've been here since 6 a.m. And they love to be like, we've been here since four and we're going to be here till you know four yep. hours after you're gone. That's right. And it creates this bonding mechanism for the struggle. Mm-hmm. So it kind of keeps you happy because you're struggling together. This happened when also when I was serving, when we were bartending and yep. serving. It was almost like, for psychologically, it's like the system makes you feel better that you're together, yeah. even though you're pissed because you only got tipped three dollars the whole fucking night. You know what I mean? It, it's it's, it's just, not a, it's not a super productive way to do things. No, it, it, it's not necessarily the best way to do things. No, because it and tricks it's been you. eroded during COVID. I would say it's. I feel like people are a little bit like oh, I'm not going to do that anymore. Well, I think feel like people are valuing time a little bit more yeah. than they used to. I think there's more vacations that people are going to yeah. start taking. People don't want to sacrifice their whole life for work anymore. More than they have to, right? You obviously have to work to live and however your finances are is your own business. But I do think people are valuing spending time with friends and family yes. and, and getting their shit, going to do their own thing. Yes. Because it's this whole, the, I'm glad the office collapse has happened. I'm glad that people aren't in offices all the time as yeah. much. But, but I think some of that will come back. But, but I, when I was sick with COVID, I had a very distinct feeling, which was I have been dead essentially for two months. Like nobody's heard from me. Yeah. And, and guess what? Everything's fine. 
without me, everything's fine. And sad. I, and and I've been miserable for these two months, right. but everything's still fine. So I could just as equally certainly disappear for four weeks and be happy, right. and everything will be fine when I come back. That's so that's when we started traveling. That's me. I said we our anniversary. We're going to Greece. As soon as we got back from Greece, we're going to France. I don't care. We got to get out of here. Good. And I've been so disgusted with so much that's going on in this country. It's really helped my perspective. Uh, it, it really to travel it, and see how the rest of the world it is. just helps you realize that it is so and so much of it is California. It, it, some that's it, true. And it, we're we're right now we're in the worst of the worst. We're in California. We're in Los Angeles. <laughs> just go to Orange County. It's totally different. I know. I came in from Orange County this morning. I know. You it to, was you totally to kiss, different. You have to kiss someone in the mouth when you cross the border. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, come on in, Alex. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're fine. You're fine. No, I was at a Starbucks before I came here. Not mask. Couldn't find a mask anywhere. In in Orange County. In Orange County. In the Starbucks inside. Well, I'm glad you brought it to my show. I'm not producing virus yet. <laughs> and by the way, it's probably going to be Omicron. You'll be, you'll be happy for Omicron! it. Omicron! <laughs> so, um, Drew, thank you for oh, coming. we've been talking. I like this went instantly. It we, did. It did. It, oh. We've been talking for an hour and a half, I think. And that's what happens when you and I get together. And you know, I need to come back on your show. Yeah. I My come wife back. was like, tell me I am back. I want to back. I want to go back. back. Right. I, I, I had a great time. Um, you and guys can, know Dr. Drew. You can find all his stuff. Uh, Dr. Drew Live. Th this group would probably like uh, Dr. Drew After Dark, oh, which Dr. Drew is After Dark, at your yeah. mom's house. If you guys Tom Segura's platform. You, they know the YMH people. Okay. All you YMH people. Get, get on hey, that. Hey, Hitler. And you, it, no, no, no. We know what you're saying. <laughs> I know what you're saying. <laughs> That's going to be clipped and there's, then put there's, on something I else. I know. There's lots of alohas in your mom's house. Right. It's, 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 it's Hey, Hitler. It's Hi, Mommies. Hi, Jeans. It's, it's but wait a minute. Thing. Also, are you, you're still doing on the studio here because they're in Austin? They're coming. No, I'm going to Austin. Oh, you are? I go to Austin every four to six weeks and do it down there. And it's been great. It's, they, they don't have their full studio set up yet. So it's know, all. He, yeah, Tommy told it, me that. It's all in his house, fly by night. It's fun as hell. It's That's really great. fun. They're, they're doing an amazing job. And so, yeah, that I do. It's doctor.tv, doctor.com. It's all there. So Yeah, we'll put it in the description below. And, and by the way, I do want to plug YMH, although even though they are raging anti-Semites and also white supremacists, I do like everybody over I at that studio. I thought they just didn't like the Irish. Mm, that's part of it. Uh, that's part of it. Because they welcome me. I'm, maybe they, we'll they don't know what you are. Yeah, that's You're true. just handsome. Might, yeah, might. Um, look in that camera and say one word or one phrase to end this episode. This Take camera? us out. Yes, baby. Take us out. I've, I've missed Andrew. I got to see him more frequently. I love you, man. In here... We pour whiskey, 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 whiskey. You were that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me five dollars for the whiskey and seventy-five dollars for the horse. Gingers are oh, hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers.